Hi Year 4, it's Miss Brandon here. So we're going to be picking up where we left off and reading Beetle Boy by M.G. Leonard. So here is a quick summary, just in case you've forgotten what has happened so far. So Darkus is a teenage boy. His dad mysteriously disappeared from a vault in the Natural History Museum where he worked. And Darkus and his friends have their suspicions it's something to do with Lucretia Cutter, a famous fashion designer and a beetle enthusiast. The house next door to Darkus is owned by two men, Humphrey and Pickering. And in this house, they've got a beetle mountain made out of cups with beetles living in them. And the beetles are a little bit strange. They respond to human instructions and they seem to be a little bit more intelligent than your average beetle. So, uh, Darkus and his friends have been trying to find out a little bit more about these beetles and the beetle mountain and how it all links together to his dad's disappearance. Okay, if you're reading along at home, we are on chapter 11, Newton. Where have you been? Uncle Max called down the stairs. I was beginning to worry. Darkus beckoned Virginia and Bertolt into the flat. Um, nowhere much, he replied, climbing down the stairs to the living room. Nowhere, eh? Uncle Max appeared in the doorway. That's often a very interesting place. He stopped, seeing Virginia and Bertolt. Oh, hello. I'm Darkus's uncle, Professor Maximilian Cuttle. He held out his hand. Pleased to meet you. Bertolt Roberts. Bertolt shook Uncle Max's hand. Virginia Wallace. Virginia waved. We've, um, we've come to help Darkus with his homework, because he's new and a bit behind. Well, that's nice. Uncle Max stepped back, smiling. Why did you say that? Darkus said to Virginia under his breath as they filed past Uncle Max into the living room. You want to tell him what we've really been doing? Darkus shook his head. Virginia gave him a knowing smile. Thought not. Come in, come in. Oh, and I see Baxter's with you too, Darkus. You didn't take the beetle to school, did you? Of course not. Good. Uncle Max clapped his hands together. Well now, isn't this lovely having guests? He beamed, eh, eh Darkus? Darkus smiled awkwardly and nodded. Virginia dropped to her knees in front of a ship made from balsa wood trapped inside a glass bottle. You've got some cool stuff here, she said to Uncle Max. Why, thank you, Virginia. That's very kind of you. Uncle Max looked delighted. Most of these things I've found on my travels. He waved at the assortment of curiosities scattered around the living room. It's a hodgepodge collection. But I like it. It reminds me of where I've been. Bertolt sat cross-legged on the floor, beside the purple hooker pipe. Look, I'm the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. He pretended to suck on the pipe and blew out a smoke ring. Virginia laughed and Darker smiled at Uncle Max. But Uncle Max wasn't looking at him. He was frowning and edging his way towards Bertolt, peering down into his mass of white blonde curls. Don't move, lad, he said. There appears to be a rather large bug in your hair. Not again, Bertolt wailed, dropping the pipe. Why do they like my hair so much? Don't panic, Darker said, leaning forward. It's a firefly. A big one, Virginia added, with a belly like burning coal. A firefly? Bertolt looked up, trying to see. Oh, I don't mind them. They're beautiful. Shall I pick it out? Uncle Max asked. But there was no need. The firefly rose up out of Bertolt's hair, bathing his face in a golden light. Hesitantly, Bertolt held his hand out for the beetle to land. The firefly was long and thin. Its copper wing casings had gold edges and a white vertical stripe down the middle. It had a tiny face and stubby mandibles that looked like a moustache. You wouldn't know he's a firefly when you look down at him, because the light comes from his belly, Virginia said loftily. It's only when he's flying that you see it. It's called bioluminescence. He's brilliant, Burkle said happily. Now we've both got beetles. I've got a beetle, Bertolt's eyes grew big. How can you tell? Well, look at him, Darker said. See how his mouth is held open. He's trying to smile at you. Baxter looks at me like that sometimes. It's cute. Hello, Bertolt whispered to the firefly. My name's Bertolt. What's yours? The firefly sat still, staring at him, smiling. Would you mind if I called you Newton? Bertolt said. He's my favourite scientist. He discovered that light was made of colours. The firefly skipped up into the air, flashing his belly. Does everyone around here have a pet beetle? Uncle Max asked huffily. 
I don't, Virginia sulked. I wish I did. Why don't you get a puppy or a rabbit? Well, they're not as cool, Virginia replied, as if Uncle Max had asked a dumb question. But he was staring at the firefly, and dark as could see, he was concerned. What's wrong, Uncle Max? Nothing. I just don't understand where all these beetles are coming from, Uncle Max scratched his head. They're bigger than normal beetles, and they seem, well, as if... Yes, Darkers leant forwards. Hmm, I don't know. I'm probably imagining things. Uncle Max shook his head. Getting funny in the brain. I must be my age, he sighed. And look, in all the excitement, I've forgotten my manners. What a terrible host. What can I get you to drink? Uncle Max looked from Virginia to Bertolt. Coffee? Mint tea? Does anyone fancy a licorice stick? Oh, a mint tea would be lovely, Professor Cuttle, Bertolt said politely. Thank you. Could I have some orange juice? Virginia asked. Uh, orange juice, um, right, of course. Um, we're right out of that. Perhaps I should nip down to Mr Patel's and get some bits and bobs. What goes well with orange juice? Biscuits, Virginia replied. Custard creams or bourbons? Darkus and Bertolt nodded. Marvellous. Well, don't let me stop you getting on with your homework. I'll pop out for supplies and deliver the refreshments forthwith. Uncle Max backed out of the door, beaming at everyone. He's nice, Virginia said, when she was sure he'd gone. I've never seen a grown-up so pleased about a kid bringing friends home, she laughed. Darkus felt his cheeks grow hot and changed the subject. Why the demands for orange juice and biscuits? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like mint tea or licorice sticks. Virginia raised an eyebrow. I prefer orange juice and biscuits. Anyway, I thought we needed to talk in private. So let's do it quickly before he comes back. She put her hands on her hips. First thing I want to know is how Bertolt got himself a beetle. She stared at him. Did you catch it? No, Bertolt looked horrified. The firefly was in the tunnel after we left Beetle Mountain. It followed us. When you ran to the shop, I talked to it a bit because... Bertolt looked at the floor... I didn't like being on my own in the dark, and talking to the firefly made me feel braver. He turned to Darkus. I lost it when you came back. I thought it had flown away, but it must have hidden in my hair. Perhaps Newton chose Bertolt like Baxter chose me, Darkus said. Virginia flared her nostrils, scowling at the idea. Darkus, Bertolt blinked. How do you talk to Baxter? I don't know. I just do. Can you teach me to understand Newton like you understand Baxter? I'm not sure. Darkus looked at his beetle crawling across the coffee table and frowned. I haven't really thought about how I do it. What's it that lets you understand what he's telling you? Mm-hmm. Can I hold Newton? Darkus asked. Of course. Bertolt offered Darkus his cupped hand. Darkus gently lifted Newton, placing the beetle on his palm and lifting him to eye level. Hello there, Newton. Nice to meet you. The firefly fluttered up and flashed his belly at Darkus. Why, thank you, Darkus nodded to the beetle, looking closely at his face and thorax. Bertolt, I think he uses his belly to communicate. Watch what he's doing with it. He turned back to the beetle. Can you flash once for yes and twice for no? He asked. The be- uh, the firefly flashed once. Virginia and Bertolt gasped. <gasps> That's a Bertolt squealed, barely able to contain his excitement. Well, Baxter talks to me with his body, Darker said. He shakes or nods his horn, flicks his antennae or waves his legs. If you look really closely and carefully at what the beetles are doing, you'll understand them. Bertolt was impressed. He held out his hand to take Newton back. I found a stairway in the Emporium, Virginia said, keen to talk about something else, that leads from the shop to the flat upstairs. And Darkus found a key to the Emporium shop door. We heard them talking, Darkus added. They think I'm still tied up in Humphrey's bedroom. They plan to climb in the window, get rid of me, and then sell the beetles to Lucretia Cutter. I wonder what they'll do when they find out I'm not there, he smiled. They're so stupid, they'll probably think the beetles ate you, Virginia laughed. She looked at the wall of the bookstuffed shelves between Uncle Max's flat and the neighbours. It's weird to think that all those beetles on the other side of that wall. I mean, how did they get there in the first place? She turned to Darkus, looking thoughtful. If Lucretia Cutter has got something to do with your dad's disappearance, and the connection between her and your dad is to do with the beetles, don't you think that it's a bit weird that there's a mountain of super beetles living next door to you? Darkus frowned. You haven't 
thought about it before, but it did seem an unlikely coincidence. But I've only lived here a couple of weeks, he pointed out. The beetles must have been living next door for ages. I mean, look at the size of the mountain. How long's your uncle lived here? Bertel asked. Oh, years, since before I was born. Could the beetles have anything to do with him? Bertel asked. I don't know, Darker shrugged. He does behave strangely when he's around Baxter. We should ask him, Virginia said. Well, how do we do that without telling him we broke in next door? Darkus asked. Well, I don't know. We should definitely ask him more about Lucretia Cutter. If your uncle thinks that she has something to do with your dad's kidnapping, that means they must know each other. Well, he dodges up my questions about her. I think there's something important that he's not telling me. Like in the museum. He told Margaret not to tell me that they were going to give Dad's job to someone else. He thinks if he tells me the truth, I won't be able to handle it. Well, that's stupid, Virginia scoffed. It's much worse not knowing. Tell me about it, Darker sighed. Then let's try again, all of us together. We'll do it when your uncle brings in the orange juice. As if on cue, they heard Uncle Max's key in the door downstairs. Five minutes later, he entered carrying a tray of orange juice biscuits and a mint tea for Bertolt. He laid it on the coffee table. Thank you, Professor Cuttle, Virginia said, picking up a glass of juice and flashing him an innocent smile. Darkus just was just telling us about his dad's disappearing and how you and he are going to solve the mystery. It sounds ever so exciting. Well, I wouldn't say, or Bertolt would I would, and I would like to help, wouldn't we, Bertolt? Oh yes, Bertolt nodded enthusiastically as he reached for a biscuit. That's well, very kind of you, but uh, we heard all about the visit to the museum, Virginia said, talking over Uncle Max, and about Darkus finding the reading glasses, and how the lady on the sticks turned up. And it turns out Bertolt nods all, knows all about her, don't you, Bertolt? Lucretia Cutter, Bertolt nodded again. She's in all the magazines. They call her the mad scientist of fashion. Well, do they now? Uncle Max looked as if there were a bad smell in the room. Well, I suppose if the cat fits... But we were wondering, how did you know who she was? Virginia asked. I beg your pardon? Well, I don't mean to be rude or anything, Professor Cuttle, sir, but I wouldn't think you were the kind of man who'd have an eye on the catwalks and fashion magazines. Virginia? Bertolt scoffed. I was wondering, Virginia continued, when you saw Lucretia Cutter at the museum, how did you recognise her? Uncle Max's mouth fell open. He closed it. Yes, Darkus lent in. How? Do you know her? Virginia persisted, taking a bite of the biscuit as she waited for him to answer. Uncle Max looked at the three children and with a great sigh sat down on the couch. Well, actually, I did know her once. Was that before she was famous? Virginia shot dark as a triumphant sideways look. Well, yes, yes it was. Uncle Max pulled at his earlobe and looked into the distance. How did you meet her? Darkus asked. Through Barty, Uncle Max admitted. He introduced us at a party. But how does Dad know Lucretia Cutter? Darkus asked. They met at university. Dad went to university with Lucretia Cutter? Oh, in a way. Uncle Max shook his head. It was a long time ago, Darkus. Your father hasn't spoken to that woman for over 15 years. Then why did she turn up at the museum? Darkus asked. And why is her name above the room that Dad disappeared from? Darkus, if I knew the answers to those questions, I would have told you already. What Darkus' dad and Lucretia Cutter did at university, Virginia said, was it to do with beetles? Uncle Max blinked as he thought about his answer. Barty's specialist field was beetles, but Lucretia Cutter was a different kind of scientist. A geneticist, I think. Her interest in beetles came from knowing Barty. His passion for beetles was infectious. Once he started talking about them, you couldn't help but become fascinated too. What about you? Virginia asked, leaning forward and taking another biscuit. Did you ever have anything to do with beetles? No, Uncle Max shook his head. You never had any beetles here in the flat then? Darkus asked. I, uh, um... Uncle Max looked terribly uncomfortable. Oh, look, we need more biscuits. He jumped up and hurried out of the room. You're right, Darkus. There's something he's not telling us, Virginia whispered. There are loads of biscuits left. 
He didn't explain the connection between your dad and Lucretia Cutter very well, Bertolt said. It must be more than just meeting at university and chatting about Beatles. Yes, we need to find out more, Virginia nodded. And I know exactly how to do it. Darker stood up, putting his hand in his trouser pocket and pulling out a white rectangle of card. I'll ask Novak Cutter. You're going to go to Towering Heights? Virginia's eyebrows shot up. Darkus nodded. Saturday morning. Darkus? Bertolt gasped. That could be dangerous. And she may not know anything. Yes, Virginia cocked her head. But then again, she might. As I bet she can tell us other stuff that will help with the Beatles. Like why her mum really wants them. She looked at Darkus. You can't trust her though. She's the enemy's daughter. She'll probably lie to you. She may even hand you over to her mother. Well, I'm not frightened of her, Darker said, bristling. If Lucretia Cutter is behind Dad's disappearance, then I want to know. And we're on page 158 and we're going to leave it there.